and try to turn it to a better light. Um, okay. So um, I can talk about this, and you'll find videos from me to software engineers talked about this up to this age. Um, so um, it turns out that often we want to undertake certain types of tasks within models. And sometimes we want to undertake those tasks from many different places within a given model. But models can be really complex also. And if we want to undertake something from many different places, um, or if we just want to avoid thinking about all the details every time, and for many other reasons, we want someone else to work on it and so on, we wrap this thing up in something called a function. Okay? So we create a function that conceptually does the work for us and is nicely named. And we can just call the function to do the work. We don't have to remember all the details. We can, of course, go look at it if we want to remember the details. But often, we have enough other things to think about. And so we just have a function called perform birth, for example. And it takes care of all the details. Of it. And maybe those will change over time as the model evolves. And we don't have to remember all the details of what's involved. It, it will we'll just say, go perform that birth and, and, and then you know, we'll, we'll continue. Um, so these are very common. And, and some of these functions um, can, so these functions basically come in two different, two different sorts. Um, one of them is to calculate values and one is to, to do something, perform an action, to undertake some, Pass the changes, okay? Um, and, uh, you know, I would refer you again to ABM model with, with birth death here. Um, I think I will probably open that up here um, just so that uh, I can walk, walk through it. But um, I am wondering if, uh, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to do this. So give me, Okay, so it's in the example models um, in participant resources here. Um, and example models, and it's ABM model with both that. So here we are, and I'm going to load this up. Okay. Um, so this model, oh, okay, and then the other one in there. There we go. Boom. Um, so I downloaded it and I'm going to go open it now. Um, and there we go. Okay. Um, so here we have person and, um, um, uh, so within this model, we have a, a bunch of functions, as you can see. Um, uh, and these functions, um, oops, where are my functions? Where are my tasks? Yeah. Um, these functions take on many tasks. One of them is the perform birth, birth function. Okay, and uh, I'll go find that perform birth. And here we go. Um, okay. Boom. So this function is called, and uh, oops. Um, but basically it undertakes a bunch of tasks. It adds a baby to the population. It reports on it. It establishes the baby's connections based on the mother's connections. It updates its location and basically records that that baby is a child of the mother. And uh, the, the child automatically knows who their mom is. Um, so this performed birth, it, it does a bunch of stuff. And, and we encapsulate it as we say, sort of capture that in a single time. So all we have to do when we use it is call this. We don't have to remember all these details. It's terrible if working with a model, we always have to remember all the details. We want to avoid that. We want to sort of divide up the work and have a separation of concerns and capture, you know, 
complicated or involved logic in places where we don't have to see it every time we're dealing with problem. We can see it when we want to. We can go look at it, but we don't have to. This is a key foundation for effective scalable solving. You know, make dealing with complexity elective, basically. Um, um, and um, we, in any logic, to enable this, any logic allows us to define this function. So um, within any, any logic, if you go to the palette and you go to the agent palette, there's a thing called function. There's also a thing called table function, which is really just kind of a lookup in a, in a table, and it's very useful for that sort of function. But there's um, a thing called function, and, and function is defined. It's, um, it consists of several pieces. and I want to walk you through this because they're extremely useful. Here we have a, you know, a good 10 to 20 of them. And it's very common we have these things because um, they can also make the code in the model easier to read because you just see, oh, this performs first rather than just seeing this welter of strange details our stakeholders looking at. When you define a function, you define a couple of things. First of all, you're going to want to decide, is this a function which computes something? In which case, it really shouldn't change anything. It returns a value. That's its job in life, is to calculate a value. Or is this a function which returns nothing and just undertakes an act? Those are the two broad steps. I mentioned it in our first two pages. There's queries and there's commands. If we start mixing them, we get all confused because we're you know, we, we want to calculate something in the process of calculating it. We're changing the state of the model. So if we calculate it again, we get something different. And, and it just gets horrendous. Um, or maybe we, we're, we're printing out values and we're printing out the results of this calculation. And then we decide later we don't need to print it out. And we forget if we stop printing it out, now the model's going to be different. It's going to do something different. These are bad things. We don't want them. And and so, you know, here we uh, we will choose between which of these types. The second thing that needs to be specified is something called an argument. Okay, and this is odd terminology, but basically, it's what information does it need to do its job. And uh, there's a set of things called parameters to this function, which are specified in each argument. And this some subtle distinctions between arguments and parameters and that's what I'm going okay. But the basic, basically the pretty close fit. Um, and in different areas of the development field, people use it differently. For all intents and purposes, they name, they describe the information task to the function needed to do its job. So often you'll have one or more pieces of information that need to be provided to do its job. I argued, you know, here a few days ago, right? Even in high school, we had the sign function and it needed something passed to it to do its job. Maybe it was a degrees and rate, it was degrees, or maybe it was a angle and radius, but it needs some number to do its job. And what happens is when you define a function, you can give a name to the thing that, it, so you would give a name to this. So maybe you'd call it angle and it will be of type double, or you call it angle and degree, it will be of type double. And then the function body could refer to that variable and say, what's the angle and take the sign of it or whatever, right? Um, so this happens to be a function which doesn't need any information. So this is blank, there, there's no arguments to it. Um, its job in life is to just perform an action, it doesn't return anything. It does something, it performs first. And it's a good practice to name these things in ways that clearly distinguish. Does it calculate? Um, so you might say calculate or compute or, or, or what have you uh, as part of the name versus perform. Like do this. Sometimes you see do or perform or, or you know, update as, as the names. Um, um, some verb that says like, you know, this is like establish this, right? Um, and uh, here, 
for example, this offspring, so, so this performed birth actually calls off to establish offspring connections based on mother's care. So it calls off to something else and says, hey, well, take care of the job of getting the baby connected to the mother's connection. All the mother's connection, social connections are going to be social connections of this baby. And it says, go do it. I don't want to worry about the details. And um, you notice I put a comment to that effect. Clicking on that brings me right here. And in order for this to do its job, it needs to know the offspring, which is a reference to person. It needs to know who the mother is, which is a reference to person. And then it goes through and it says, okay, if the mother, uh, if the mother has any connections, we're going to go through them and we're going to connect the baby to them, the offspring to them, and then we'll connect the baby to its mother. Okay. Um, that's what this function does. It needed information to do its job. So this passed arguments to these, to, to this function, which has these what are called formal parameters. I mean, these are where it takes the values of the arguments and it and it, it uses them. So this is the information this function needs to do its job. You can't call it without giving that information. It needs that information to complete its task. And that's why it's passed here. And that's why if you look, you have arguments. So these things can be defined very easily. And they take a burden off the mind when you define them because you put together in one place the code. And you can call it from many places. Maybe. Maybe there are several places in the model where you need to perform a birth for one reason or another. Or maybe, you know, there's something uh, more generic than that having to do with uh, determining the appearance of something. For many places. Um, it also just eliminates where this is called. Rather than putting all this code, you can imagine taking all this code, all this code, and all this code, which is something else it called, and, and doing all of that in this place, it would just be a headache. You'd have all this code sitting there. And it's just easier to say perform birth. And again, if you're showing this to a stakeholder and they say, well, what is that? And you say, oh, it's delivery and, and we perform birth there. They don't have to see that unless you want. You don't have to see it unless you want. And you can put it in a function where it's documented and it, it's nicely, nicely laid out, and you can carve out some of the code. And if it's really clear what it needs to do, what things does it depend on? Um, so it's it's very clear, like what's the responsibility? Of it. Okay. So these are functions, and functions are like if you have a model um, that grows in size, it's really useful to have. Functions. Now it turns out they're often called methods. There, there's a, a bit of a distinction here. Functions that are on objects that you call on objects are called methods. Okay? Um, and generally, they know about the object on which they're called already. And as I said earlier in, in the first session, they, they, it's, it's better if they do one or two things. They either compute values or they're not part. It makes it lends clarity, and you name them accordingly, and it prevents confusion. Um, and it prevents needless error. Um, so there's this header that says what types of information it needs to do its job, and then there's the body. Right? Um, method bodies contain code. There it is, the function body. Okay. Um, uh, and I should say, this thing needed offspring and mother to do its job. These things can only be referred to from themselves. That, that, like, it's not that this is a variable that's used all across the model. No, no, no. This is only for the sake of this code. Only in this code do you have to, is there a thing called mother and off? Call it, the code executes, it's done. There's no, you know, this basically everything is cleaned up. There's no, you're not putting any scattering things around the model. It's only while you're in this code that these things are available and they're not they're not anything the rest of the model has to worry about at all. There's no clashes, no confusions about multiple things, name this across the model. Okay. Um, 
So we can do things inside the method, inside the function that are quite, you know, set out, set apart from that set. Um, okay. Um, right. Um, I will say that if you were to pass in this and then assign to offspring inside here, if you were to uh, make an assignment to the value of offspring, you won't be hurting things outside because like um, there's no, oops, um, there's there's nothing that you're going to be modify um, modifying outside um, that you're going to be harming by assigning to offspring. On the other hand, if you change the object referred to by offspring, that's another matter. But um, it's uh, if you're just referring to the offspring, uh, just just assigning to that variable hold, holding uh, the reference to offspring, you're not changing. It. Okay, um, so. When you call a method, it goes and does the computation, then it returns and, and it's done. Um, I will say that if you have one thing calling another and calling another, which is what occurs here, this calls this and, and calls connect to, for example, this forms what's called a call stack. One thing is called from another, called from another. And while this thing is running, um, this is still waiting to come back to it. Um, so this thing is still here. Now this thing is called, if it calls something else, it'll be going up. It'll be sort of layering it like pancakes on top of each other because the lowest level thing is still underway. It's waiting for the next thing up, to be connected, next thing up to be connected. And this is a call stack. And this may seem like arbitrary stuff. And normally I wouldn't mention this except if something goes wrong in your model, um, you will get sometimes a printout of the call stack. And uh, it, will, it will say things that you can actually interpret. So for example, I could, can I run this model right now? Um, let me just, uh, and I've got to finish up, but um, I am going to say here, run, and let's see, um, this is my 2007 or something. Oh, oh, it's it's got to take a stupid step. Okay, sorry. Um, so what what file is? Oh, by the way, this is a call stack. <laughs> okay, there's my call stack. Great, great. Okay, it says it's reading this. Where was it? It was in Excel read file. Oh, it was in main. Initiate basic structure in main. Okay. Um, instantiate basic structure of this, but that's one of the things. Okay, so it was in some main code. Yeah, this isn't, isn't that helpful. Create root, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so it's basically, while it's creating this model, it's, ah, uh, here we go. Okay, it's saving, um, no, 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 okay. Um, so it's actually telling me that there is, uh, a problem here. Uh, okay, I'm I'm kind of going back. Where where is this um, file input stream? Okay, so um, it's 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 somewhere trying to read an Excel file. So this is a call step. It's saying what called what called what called what, etc. And here it's reading a file that it's having problems. I'm going to search for read file. And nope, it's not. It's not finding read file. Okay, that's interesting. Um, oh, it's just. Okay, sorry, it's searching with the wrong search. I want to find read file. No, nope. no. Nope. Okay, so let's let's try going back to that. Um, uh, okay, result result dot xlsx. Let's let's try searching for. Ah, there we go. Output of data sets set in factors. Okay. And this is referring, this is referred to by what? It's referred to by the destroy code. Aha, there it is right there. So I'm going to comment this out and I'm going to now be able to run it, I think. And I will show you another more useful call set. So here we go. Run and there we go. Boom. Oh, okay. Um, cannot find. Okay, so it's trying to open it. I think it's this one. 
yes, it's an Excel file. I'm going to ignore this. Okay. So it's basically dealing with this. And now let's see what unhappiness that that uh, leads to. And I've commented out this display code. So, okay, fine. I think this should be fine. Now. Okay. And ABM model with birth death. It is, okay, it's happy. And I'm going to say simulate. There we go. And I'm going to run it. Okay. Okay, great. Okay, so this is a demographic uh, turnover and so on. I'm going to stop it at a point. I'm going to cause an error when a birth occurs. Um, so when we're trying to establish an offspring location based on the mother's location, I'm going to to be to force it into some unhappiness. I'm going to say int a equals one divided by zero. So um, basically, it's going to try to do a divide by zero, and it's uh, going to be um, uh, undertake. Uh, there it is. OK, so here's a problem. And you'll notice what it tells me. It tells me it exactly this call stack that I'm speaking about right now So uh, in my slides. So in my slides, um, uh, there was right here. Um, uh, perform birth called established connections, et cetera. And you can see perform birth called this established uh, offspring location based on mother's location. And that's where the error occurred. It occurred while in this code. This is my code. If I click here, it will actually show me the Java code right there. That's it. And it's because of the call stack, I knew the location. Okay. Okay. So great. Um, that's all we have time for. And uh, I think, you know, I've covered a bunch of the most important features of using, uh, using Java in any language. I've covered variously expressions, values, statements, type, variables. We covered uh, the notion of generics as examples of types. Uh, the use of types, we just we discussed classes, we discussed objects and, and references to objects. Uh, we discussed how uh, objects can contain references to other objects, so there's collections like arrays, array lists, uh, and, and other lists. And, um, and we discussed some about functions, you know, functions hide complexity, functions allow use from many places. Functions allow other people to do work, to divide up work, uh, divide and conquer, and how functions uh, allow us to sort of manage complex models. Uh, and uh, we saw how um, uh, parameters or, or arguments are used inside functions, values, and we saw how how we um, using functions can end up undertaking. Uh, uh, undertaking debugging when we have a problem, we could see this call stack and figure out, drill down to it. Okay, that is all. So I uh, hope that, hope those tutorials offer some value and um, uh, I look forward to any further guidance uh, anyone may want to offer on things that one could